to another Highfield Academy training video. I'm Laura and this video is for Functional Skills English Level 2. This video contains information and guidance on using organisational markers at Level 2. Now today we're going to be looking at the assessment criteria, convey clear meaning and establish cohesion use, using organisational markers effectively. Now, before we break down what this criteria is actually asking us, let's revisit the types of texts and organisational markers. You may have come across articles and reports already. Now, here you can see that each text is clearly laid out, both using organisational markers such as subheadings, text boxes, tables, etc. These really help to lay out the text nicely and make it easier for the reader to understand the information. Now, pay close attention to the subheadings used in the report. We'll revisit some of these later. But you'll usually find reports include an introduction, benefits and drawbacks or findings, and a recommendation and conclusion. Now, leaflets and adverts come in all shapes and sizes and can be formal or informal. Here you can see that the leaflet is quite lengthy as there's lots of information to be put across. This is organised clearly with subheadings, bullet points, images and text boxes. The advert uses a large eye-catching image which gives the readers an immediate clue as to what it's about before they even read the text. You can see it also uses subheadings and bullet points to display the information in a clear and cohesive manner. Emails and letters are very similar but may vary in terms of being formal or informal depending on the audience. They are, however, set out in very similar ways, and they may both use subheadings, as you can see in the email, to organise large amounts of information. Now, to gain marks for this criteria, you would need to include subheadings, bullet points, numbered lists or footnotes, for example, in your email or letter. So now let's look at some organisational markers that you may need to use in your writing exam. Now, strap lines are often used in articles, leaflets and adverts, and usually give the reader an extra bit of information about the text that will make them want to read more. Bullet points help to organise information and most, are most commonly used when you want to give several pieces of information at once, or if you need to include a list. Subheadings are probably the most commonly used organisational marker and can be used across a range of texts. These are a really good way of breaking a text up into manageable chunks and helping the reader to make sense of the information. Now, text boxes are often used to make a specific or important piece of information stand out. They're often used in articles to showcase something that someone has said to emphasise a point. And tables are a great way to display data, especially if that data is in the form of numbers. They help to make it really clear and are easy to read. Illustrations are a brilliant way to ensure that the reader understands a certain point and can help brighten up a text. They're most commonly used in leaflets and articles, but can be used across a variety of texts. Photo captions help to explain what is going on in the image a little bit further and can also help to identify specific people in images, if that's what the text is about, therefore helping the reader to understand the text a little more. Now, footnotes help to clarify a term or idea in a text and, again, help to make the text clear. Headers also add a little extra information for the reader, as they may include the author's name, document version or a date. And finally, numbered lists are very similar to bullet points in that they help to separate or chunk information uh, when you've got a lot to cover at once. But numbered lists are also a great way um, to explain a process or order of actions as it's clear to the reader what must be done first, second and so forth. So now looking back at the criteria, you should be able to see some ways in which you can create a clear meaning or use organisational markers effectively. But let's take this a step further and ensure we know how to convey meaning and establish cohesion. Let's look at what that actually means. So to convey means to put forward or communicate an idea, message or information. And cohesion means forming a united or whole idea. So essentially, we want to make or put forward a clear meaning of a whole idea by using organisational markers effectively. Now let's see how this is done in some of the texts you may have seen already. So here we have an article from a magazine. 
Now the writer has used organisational markers effectively here because they've used a text box to single out the important information that helps to introduce the text. Now they've used subheadings to break the text down into manageable chunks. And they've included a footnote to clarify specific terms in the text. So this leaflet includes bullet points and illustrations to break the information down further. These features also draw the reader's eye to the text and help to convey a clear meaning. The writer has again used subheadings to break the text up into manageable chunks. So this report includes a table as well as subheadings, as there are multiple terms that needed to be clarified. A table is more appropriate than a succession of footnotes here, as the information is presented nice and clearly. OK, so now it's over to you. Here is some information from a medical care report, but there are no organisational markers in place. Now, usually reports include an introduction, findings, recommendations and conclusion. So that should give you a clue as to how best to organise this information. Now, you can pause the video to read the text and make some notes on how you would organise this report using the organisational markers we've discussed in this video. And remember, you don't have to include them all, just the ones that are most appropriate for this report. OK, so let's see how you did. Now, remember, this is just one example of how you could have laid out this report. There are many other ways you could have done it um, and your organisational markers may look slightly different to the one in the video, but as long as they are appropriate and they are used in the correct way, then they should be fine. Now, the first thing we need to include is a heading. Now, the reader needs to know what the report is about and also any basic information to set up the report. So you can see here, we've got the subject and the date included here also. And the next thing to consider is how to introduce this piece of information. So we can do this with a subheading. And in this case, the information sets out the, pu the purpose of the report. So you could have also said introduction or something similar. Now, this next section gives us a bit of background or findings, if you like. So that's a sufficient subheading that you can put here. So then the narrative changes to how this person would support Mrs. Braithwaite or recommendations, if you like. Now, as there are several recommendations here, it would be useful to either use bullet points or a numbered list to present the information more clearly. And finally, the report draws to a close or conclusion, if you like. So you could also have included a little more information about the writer. Um, and even a logo or image if you prefer. So these are all common features of a report and it's something that you can add uh, to make your text a little bit more inviting. Now, if you are taking your assessment via the on-screen platform, you need to be aware that this feature has limited functionality in terms of creating organisational markers. So to ensure you don't miss out on valuable marks for this criteria, you could leave instructions for markers where you might require a particular organisational feature to be, for instance, an image or a table. You could say something like include the image of a person looking frustrated with the caption frustrated man seeks IT solutions. Or you could say something like include a table which shows all the, all the data relating to children's ages. Um, this will be sufficient for your on-screen exam and will show the marker exactly where you mean that organisational feature to be. OK, so let's recap some of the things that we have talked about in this video. So you should be able to now understand what should be included in each text type. You should also be able to select appropriate organisational markers for those specific text types. And you should now be able to ensure organisational markers establish cohesion and convey clear meaning throughout the text. Now, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and make sure you check out all the other functional skills videos that are available on our website for support with your functional skills exams. Thank you for watching.